In this video, I will be demonstrating how to read a CSV file and load its data to a data grid in WPF without using any third-party library. Now, CSV stands for Comma Separated Values. It is a simple and widely used file format for storing and exchanging tabular data. In a CSV file, data is stored as plain text and is organized in rows and columns with each line of text representing a row of data and each field of data within a row being separated by a comma, hence the name comma separated values. Now the first row typically contains the column headers which provide labels for each column. So with that being said, let's go to Visual Studio and get to the coding. All right, so here in Visual Studio, I have a WPF project set up and this project contains a single view which is the main window view, and this is what we see here. So this view has a simple UI defined that consists of a button and a data grid. So if we take a closer look at the button, we can notice here that this button has got a style applied to it. And that style is defined inside the app.zamo file. So basically the way this application is going to function is that each time I click this button, it's going to open up an open file dialog which will allow me to select a CSV file. Then from there, I'm going to extract the data and display it inside the data grid. So the first step is to implement the logic that's going to extract that data. And the best way of doing that is by creating a class that's going to encapsulate the logic. So I'll go to the project here and I'll add a new class. I'll name this class CSV data. So I'll start by making this class public and it's going to contain a single method that's going to handle the logic of extracting the data so I add a new method and it will be a static method it's going to return an object that's going to store the extracted data and I'll store it inside a data view object and then I'll give it a name I'll name it get CSV data so this method is going to accept a single argument and that will be the path to the CSV file. So what I'll do is I'll simply add a parameter of the type string and I'll give it a name path. All right, now WPF contains a class that we can use to extract data from text files. In this case, we understand that the CSV file is a simple plain text file that organizes data in rows and columns. So the name of that class is called the text field parser. So I'll create an instance of this class. And this constructor takes in a string, which is the path to the text file that will be manipulated. So in this case, I'll simply pass it the same path that will be passed through the method. All right, so once I extract the data, I would like to store it inside another object. And the best object for this job is the data table object. The reason I use the data table object is because I want to maintain the table format. So I want to keep the rows and the columns. So I'm going to create a new instance of the data table class. And that should do it. Now, this class helps us manipulate plain text files. Now we understand that the CSV file uses commas to delimit or basically to specify when data begins and when data ends. So we need to also tell this class the delimiter. So in this case, what character is used to determine when data is beginning or ending. So I'll simply get the object parser and I'll call a method called set delimiters and here I'll simply specify a string and this string will be the comma all right so that should do it so I'll start extracting the data and to do that I'll add an if statement and I'll get my parser object now this object has got a property called end of data so basically this is a boolean and this property can indicate two conditions. The first condition is that it will indicate that there is data 
to be read. And the other condition is that it will indicate that there is more data to be read. So if we read halfway, uh, this will always return false because it's not the end of the data. So we can use it to represent two conditions. So what I'll do is I'll ensure that there is data and then I'll read the data. So I'll create a variable. I'll name this variable columns and this will be equal to the parser. Then I'll call a method called read fields. So what this is going to do, it's going to read a single line in the text file, in our CSV file, and it's going to return an array of strings. So whenever it finds a comma, it will create a string and store it inside an array. So we understand that in the CSV file, the first row represents the column headers. So by reading the first row, we are extracting the columns. So what I'll do after I have the columns, I'll call the for each loop. And I'll simply say for each column inside the columns list, simply add that column to the data table. So the data table contains a property called columns. And this allows us to add the column names. So I'll simply call the add method and I'll add those names. So I'll add them by simply adding each column. So this is going to loop until all the columns are done. So the first row, right? So this bunch of code here is simply extracting the columns. Now we can extract the rest of the data. So what I'm going to do here is I'm now going to use a while loop. So I'll simply say while. Now here I'm going to use the same condition. But this condition has got a different meaning here. It simply means if there's more data to be read, continue reading that data. So we called the read fields method here. So what it does, it reads the, the first file, then moves on to the next. So whenever I call it, it's going to continue reading the rest of the rows here. So I'll simply add a variable and I'll simply say row. So this row is going to contain a number of fields. So I'll call the parser and I'll call the read fields method. So this will simply return all the fields in that row. So once I have those, I'll add them to my data table object. So I'll simply call the rows property and I'll add the rows. And I'll simply add So basically what this is going to do is it will continue reading line after line until all the rows are done. So when this returns false, it means we are at the end of the data and it's time to exit this while loop. So at that stage, it would mean that our data table is ready. So what I'm going to do here is I'll simply return my data table. Now the data table has got property called the default view and the default view is simply going to retain all the data that we stored so I'll simply say default view so I'll simply return that and we're going to have our data inside this data view object all right so that's the easiest way of reading a CSV file so I'll go ahead and save this class and I'll go to the view here so what I'm going to do is I'll add a click handler on this button. So I'll say add new event handler. Then I'll give this data grid a name. Simply say data grid. Then I'll say CSV data grid. All right, so I'll go ahead and save this. So let's go to the code behind of this view. All right. So here we can see the click event handler. So what I'm going to do here is I'm now going to request for the open file dialog to be opened. So to do that, we need to use the open file dialog object. So I'll say open file dialog. Then I'll just give it a name, open file is equal to a new instance. 
All right, so this is going to be in charge of opening the file dialog. So what I would like to do is I would like to only show CSV files. So to do that, I can use a filter property. So I'll simply say open file, then I'll specify a filter. So this will only show me specific files. Now the filter is a string and it has got a specific syntax that we need to follow. And basically what it is, is it contains two parts. It contains a description and the file extension. So I'll specify the description. So I'll simply say CSV files. Then I'll add this. Then I'll simply add the extension. So I'll simply say star then dot CSV. So it will simply show me CSV files and the description will be set to that. All right. Now the open file object has got a method that we can call. And that method is called the show dialog method. Now this method returns a boolean and that boolean will indicate on whether a file was selected or not. So what we can do is we can use an if statement. So simply say if we call the open file dialog, we should ensure that it returns true. And if, re if it returns true, we can perform something. All right. So what we are going to do here is we are simply going to use the class that we created, and that's the CSV data class. And I'll call the method, which is the get CSV data. All right. We understand that this is going to return a data view. So I'll store it inside a variable. I'll simply give it a name. CSV data. All right. Now it requires that we pass in a string and that string can be found in the open file object. So by specifying open file, then I'll get the file name. The file name is basically the file that we chose and that's the path to that file. All right. So here, this method is going to extract the data and store it inside this variable. So once we now have this data, we can now pass it to the data grid. So I'll simply say, in fact, I'll go back to the view and we get this name CSV data grid. All right, so let's go CSV data grid. Then I'll say item source is equal to the data view, which is this, and all the data contained. All right, so that should do it. So at this point, let's go ahead and test the application. All right, so the application is up and running. So I'll go ahead and click this import CSV button. And here we see we are in the downloads folder and I have two files showing up. Now the reason we only see CSV files is because we specified the filter right here on the filter property of the open file object. Now I'm going to select the smaller file, which is this one here. All right, so here we can see the data has been loaded. And we can also see that the columns have been added as well. So this was done automatically by the data grid. And the reason this happened is because of the type of object we used to bind to its item source. And that's a data view object, which comes from the data table class. So that's the reason you would want to use a data table when manipulating any data, cause you can dynamically add the columns and the rows. All right, so go ahead and open up the other file as well. And this one is slightly larger, so it should take a few seconds. All right, so here we can see that the data has been loaded as well. So we have a lot of data here. So you can also choose to only load a portion of that data and not the whole file. You can um, modify the code to do that for you. All right, so 
there you have it guys this is how to load csv data into a data grid in wpf thanks for watching this video i hope you found it useful i'm going to leave the source code to this project in the video description remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you find this content useful i'll see you in the next one